equipping your home theater system with speakers can cost a fortune. Thankfully, you don't have to break the bank to find a decent soundbar that can make watching TV or movies more exciting. Even some of the cheapest soundbars perform fairly well, especially if you watch a lot of dialogue-heavy content like TV dramas or like to listen to podcasts or audiobooks at home. The Roku Smart Soundbar looks a bit like a very large Roku Premiere, sharing the same general shape with curved corners on one side and sharp corners on the other. It's much, much bigger, though, measuring 2.8 by 32.2 by 3.9 inches and weighing 5.5 pounds. The front face, with its curved corners, is covered in a dark gray grill cloth that wraps around the sides. The rest of the soundbar is matte black plastic, with a glossy Roku logo on the top. A single indicator LED behind the grill in the front lights up when it receives a signal, but otherwise doesn't provide any indication of the soundbar's status. The back panel holds USB, HDMI, optical input, and power connectors in a recess in the center, along with a reset button. HDMI and optical cables are included, and the soundbar works with HDMI audio return channel to accept audio from your TV over the HDMI ARC port without using a separate optical connection. Since it functions as its own 4K Roku media streamer, it's a useful device to connect to an HDMI port, but it has no HDMI inputs like the JBL Link Bar and other HDMI-compatible soundbars that can function as input switches. The included remote is identical to the remote included with Roku TVs. It's a short, matte black plastic wand with rounded ends, dominated by the signature Roku Purple Direction Pad. Home, back, and power button sit above the pad, while option, microphone, and playback controls sit below it. Four dedicated service buttons for ESPN+, Hulu, Netflix, and Sling TV can be found under the playback controls. A volume rocker and mute button sit on the right edge of the remote, near the top, and a pinhole microphone rests between the power and backslash home buttons. Measuring 2.5 by 36.0 by 3.9 inches, the black plastic Alto 7 Plus is on the smaller side, with a forward-facing grille covering dual 1.5-inch tweeters and dual 2.0 by 4.5-inch midrange drivers. A TCL logo is situated in the middle of the grille, above the status LED that tells you what source you're listening to based on the color it emits. Up top, there's a control panel with buttons for power, source, Bluetooth pairing, and volume control. A recessed area on the back of the soundbar houses connections for HDMI ARC, optical, 3.5mm O-in, IR pass-through, and USB. The Alto 7 Plus is Dolby Digital compatible, and can also stream audio via Bluetooth. The sub measures 12.9 by 8.3 by 9.8 inches, with the 6-inch woofer placed on the rear panel, along with a ported area to allow for better airflow. This rear panel also houses the connection for the included power cable. The remote measures roughly 0.7 by 6.0 by 1.5 inches and has buttons for power, mute, Bluetooth pairing, source, and three modes, movie, music, or news. The remote also has a central control pad with buttons for play slash pause, track forward slash backward and volume up slash down. There's no individual volume control for the sub, which is a bummer. Simply put, we're impressed by the TCL Alto 7 Plus. Movie explosions pack thunder, bass drums have some extra heft, and there's strong high mid presence to keep things crisp and detailed. The soundbar literally looks like a simple black soundbar with an Amazon Echo Dot built into it. It measures 2 by 43 by 4 inches and weighs just under 5 pounds, with a very slight taper from its thick middle to its narrower side caps. The front, top, and back are covered in black grill cloth, except for a plastic panel that runs over the middle and down to the back panel. The top of the panel holds a circular control disc that looks and functions just like the top of an Echo Dot. It holds four buttons inside a light ring that glows blue and points in the direction from which it detects voice commands. The design is so indistinguishable from the Echo Dot that it's easy to imagine Polk simply cutting a circular hole into the top of the soundbar and shoving a dot in. This isn't the case, though, it's a permanent part of the soundbar's design. The back of the soundbar holds all the wired connections in a recess cut out of the base, between two small rubber feet that keep the soundbar stable on any flat surface. The ports include an optical audio input, two HDMI inputs, an HDMI output that works with any TV's audio return channel HDMI port, 
a USB port, and a connector for the included power adapter. This recess also holds the button for syncing the soundbar with the included wireless subwoofer. The second HDMI input faces sideways and the recess away from the other ports, providing plenty of clearance for a media streaming stick like the Amazon Fire TV stick, the Roku Streaming Stick Plus, or the Google Chromecast. The USB port is intended to provide power to any streaming stick plugged into the side-facing input, it doesn't handle data. The Height S350's main unit is a relatively modest 2.7x35.5x3.5-inch bar, with a black contour featuring touch-sensitive buttons on its faux leather top panel and a front-facing grille covering the drivers. The buttons are for power, TV, Bluetooth source, and volume, as well as indicators for multi-channel, TV, or Bluetooth modes, they're labeled up top, but the LEDs face forward from behind the grille. Also beneath the grille, front firing drivers deliver the audio, combining with the wireless subwoofer for an output of 320 watts. The subwoofer measures roughly 15.2 by 15.3 by 7.5 inches, is shaped somewhat like a PC tower, and houses a 6.3 inch driver. As for connectivity, the Height S350 has an HDMI output and an optical input, with an optical cable included. The back panel also houses an IR repeater to transmit the remote signal to the TV. The sound bar can be mounted to the wall, a mounting guide is included, but no mounting brackets. You get an oblong, 6.2 inch, black remote, which has buttons along the top section for power, TV and Bluetooth source, and a number of sound modes including auto, cinema, music, night, and voice. The middle section houses A plus slash minus volume control, and below that are buttons for the subwoofer volume, mute, audio, secure link, indicators, and modes for game, news, sports, and standard. The remote runs off of two included AAA batteries. The Height X8500 is a self-contained audio system. There's no separate wireless subwoofer, nor extraneous wireless surround speakers. It's a smart, singular soundbar designed to fit just about anywhere. The subwoofer may be built in, but the bar remains pleasingly slim. A modest 89 centimeters wide, it's suitable for TVs measuring between 49-55 inches. The cosmetic finish has a sense of style. The front-facing array is protected by a smart rolled grille, while a gunmetal gray trim adds interest. Up top are touch-sensitive buttons, for power, input selection, volume and Bluetooth pairing. Connectivity is relatively sparse, limited to just two HDMIs, one an input, the other an output with eARC. There's also an optical digital audio input, for when ARC isn't available. The 4K HDMI board is compatible with Dolby Vision, HDR10 and HLG. Overall, the Height X8500's compact design is easy to live with, with no separate subwoofer to claim floor space. Instead we get twin forward-facing woofers. Perhaps, surprisingly for a Dolby Atmos soundbar, there are no up-firing drivers and HDMI connectivity is limited. Sony has opted for a stripped-back feature set here to keep costs down. There's no smart Wi-Fi connectivity, or on-screen menu. Instead the soundbar communicates via LED lights, which signpost Dolby Atmos and DTSX sources, as well-chosen inputs. The bar is driven by a thin finger-style remote control, which despite its dimensions is not shy of buttons. All the various sound presets are given prominence, alongside processing modes, 